Hello and welcome back to our discussion of electronic circuits. Today we're going to look at the question of maximum power transfer. So, so far we've seen a lot of different ways of analyzing circuits and then coming up with also with circuits that act equivalently in an electrical sense. So now let's answer a really fundamental question and that is the question of maximum power transfer. So this is the scenario that we have in, this, in today's uh, lecture is that we're going to, we have a circuit and the circuit is inside of a box and we may and the question is is what value of r sub l do i attach to this circuit so that my r sub l will absorb the maximum possible power so we have the circuit in the box we can't do anything about the circuit it's given to us we have to use it for whatever reason but we are given the freedom to choose r sub l and so obviously we'd like to absorb, we'd like to get the maximum possible benefit from attaching to the circuit. We want to absorb the maximum possible power from the circuit. So since we have the freedom to choose R sub L, the question is which R sub L do we choose in order to get maximum possible power? Of course, the resistor R sub L could take on an infinite number of values, so we have lots of choices. Which one is the one we want? Well, we could take the circuit in the box and we could analyze it and come up with a derivation that will tell us which R sub L to choose. And that's answers our question but then as soon as somebody changes let's say that voltage source the four volts to something else then we have to redo our analysis again likewise if someone changes any one of the values inside of the box then we have to redo all of our work again also doing the derivation to figure out which r sub l i'm looking for uh, using this particular circuit topology is a is kind of wasted effort because it's only going to be good for a circuit that looks just like this what we'd really like to do is come up with a way to ask the question that gives us a much more generic answer that we can reuse the results from over and over and over again. And we can do that. Because remember that Thevenin said, Thevenin says that any circuit composed of linear elements and sources, so here's our box and we have this is any circuit that's composed of linear elements and sources can be represented with an equivalent circuit that is composed of just a source and a resistor in series. So this may be the circuit that we have to deal with and we can create an equivalent circuit that is a Thevenin source and answer the question for the Thevenin circuit and it also answers the question for us because they're equivalent. But furthermore, if we do answer the question for the Thevenin source here on the right, then we've really answered the question once and for all because remember all circuits can be represented in a Thevenin form. So once we answer the question of which R sub L absorbs maximum possible power from the Thevenin circuit, then we've answered the question once and for all because all circuits can be made to look like the problem on the right. So if we can figure this out, then we've really got a result that is very powerful and useful. So let's get started. Because this is what the, sor the circuit on the right is what the circuit always looks like, it's a source in series with the resistor and of course our R sub L gets attached then we know there's a current that's going to flow and the current that flows is simply going to be the voltage source VTH across the two resistors RTH and R sub L which are in series so the current that flows in the right hand circuit so this current I is the same as this current I in the right hand circuit is given by the formula this force formula here now we're looking to find the power absorbed in R sub L. So the power absorbed in R sub L, the power absorbed in any resistor, remember the power absorbed in any resistor is simply going to be the current in that resistor squared times that resistor. So if I want to find the power absorbed in R sub L, then it's going to be the current in R sub L squared times R sub L. And so the power absorbed in our load resistor R sub L is given by the second formula and that's simply plugging the first formula into the definition or the, uh, the formula I squared R for power. So what we want to do is we want to find the maximum possible power absorbed in R sub L and if you remember from your calculus to find the maximum power absorbed, to find the maximum of a function you need to, differ you need to differentiate it all right, and so the, the, the derivative of the power absorbed is given by the third formula, and we see that we have R sub L 
in the denominator, and this is it. So we have a, and also in the numerator. And so remember, the derivative of a fraction is going to be low d high minus high d low over low low. And so I simply take the uh, denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared, and this is the derivative of the power in r sub l with respect to r sub l. And we take the power, the derivative of the power in r sub l with respect to r sub l because r sub l is the variable that we can change. It's the variable we're turning the knob on trying to figure out what the answer is. So there's the derivative in the third equation. And remember, when we want to find a maximum of something, we take a derivative and we set it equal to 0, and that will give us the extrema. And so take the derivative, set it equal to 0. Well, it's a really complicated formula, but if you, you, know, you stop and think about it, for a second. If I just set the numerator equal to 0, then I'll get the result I want. And that's what the fourth equation is, is the numerator of the third equation set equal to 0, and then a little bit of algebra has been done. So if you just take this fourth equation, and this is now a, a, a polynomial in R sub L and RTH, and, and saw, set it equal to 0, and figure out where that occurs. So you take the fourth equation, do a little bit of algebra on it, rearrange, you'll get the fifth equation. And then doing, uh, taking the terms here in the fifth equation and multiplying through and then collecting terms, you'll get the sixth equation. And we're almost there. And if you look at the sixth equation, it says that RTH squared minus R sub L squared must be equal to 0. And that occurs when R sub L is going to be equal to plus or minus RTH. But if we recall, resistors. So R sub L resistors must be greater than 0. We only have positive resistors. We can't have negative resistors. So you end up with the final result is that the maximum power will be absorbed by R sub L when R sub L equals R T H. So if I take my circuit that we originally started from, I create a Thevenin equivalent circuit for it. And I can do that because Thevenin said it was possible. That circuit does exist, and he tells us how to do it. I create a Thevenin equivalent for the circuit in the box on the left. So now I have the circuit on the right. I know that the circuit on the left will give me the maximum possible, the greatest possible power when I choose my load resistor to be equal to RTH. I make these two. I make my load resistor the same value as the RTH resistance that I computed. If I make R sub L a value of RTH, these two are the same, then my R sub L will absorb the greatest possible power. Very powerful result because any circuit, any circuit can be represented in a Thevenin form and the result always says that the load value, the load resistor value, when equal to the Thevenin resistance value, will absorb the greatest possible, the maximum possible power. Let's do an example. So going back to uh, the, from the previous lectures when we did a Thevenin equivalent circuits, and we'll, I'll leave the details uh, back in that video so you can go and look it over again if you need to. But we had the circuit here in the box. And this is the one we started with. And if you recall and watching the videos, that when we do a Thevenin, we find the Thevenin equivalent circuit for the circuit in the box, we find it's going to be an 8 volt voltage source in series with 5k ohms. So maybe the question is okay, what value of R sub L do I attach? What value of R sub L do I attach to my sort? to my circuit in order to get the greatest maximum possible power. Well, once we find the Thevenin equivalent circuit, we know that when R sub L is 5k ohms, that the 5k ohms will absorb the greatest possible power from the Thevenin circuit. Therefore, I know that this value needs to be 5k ohms in order to get the maximum possible power from the circuit that we started from. So maybe what is that 
that, that maximum power. Or let's look at that for a moment. And so we go back and we can just do the analysis on the Thevenin circuit, because if we do the Thevenin analysis, that will give us the answer back in the original circuit because they're equivalent. So what is the current that flows in a Thevenin source? Well, it's going to be the current I is going to be VTH. And of course, we know that RL and RTH are the same value, so it's going to be 2 R sub L. And then what is the power in R sub L, the power absorbed by the load resistor? What's going to be the current in the load resistor times R sub L? And we just found I, so it's the current I. And we're going to square that, so it's VTH squared over 4 R sub L. And then that needs to be multiplied times R sub L. And we find the maximum possible power is going to be VTH squared over, nope, excuse me, that's a squared down there, VTH squared over 4 R sub L. And so if we do that for analysis for this particular problem, the maximum power absorbed by our load, what is that going to be? Well, VTH we found was 8 volts. So we have 8 volts squared, and we have 4 times, and we found that the VTH is 5 K ohms. And when you do that analysis, you'll discover that the answer is 3.2, oh, excuse me, 3.2 milliwatts, because we have volts and K ohms, 3.2 milliwatts. Well, let's do another example. So if you go back and look at the Thevenin equivalent circuit video, we had, I believe, this circuit, which is similar to the one we just did, except for it's uh, got a controlled source in it. And if we want to find the maximum, what is, we're, the question is, what is the maximum possible power I can absorb from my circuit? That is, what R sub L should I choose in order to get the maximum possible power? And as we've seen before, the maximum possible power is absorbed from a circuit when your load resistor is chosen such that it is equal to the Thevenin resistance. So whenever anyone says maximum possible power transfer, you really need to immediately think of Thevenin equivalent circuits. Because the way you determine the value of R sub L to attach to your circuit, you need to have it equal to RTH. So we need to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit for the circuit in question. And if you go back and look at the, the video for Thevenin equivalent circuits, you will see that the equivalent circuit is an 8 volt source in series with 10 K ohms. So again, the question may be, what value, what value do I attach? What should R sub L be? Well, R sub L should be chosen to be equal to RTH. And how much is that? That's going to be 10 K ohms. So if I attach a 10 K ohm resistor to my circuit, it will absorb the maximum possible power from my circuit. What is that maximum possible power? Well, it's fun. We can also find the maximum possible power a different way, because remember the power absorbed by a resistor is also equal to the voltage across the resistor. All right, so in this case, V sub L, if I define this as the load voltage, V sub L, the power in the resistor is V sub L squared divided by R. Now notice for maximum possible power transfer to occur, the load resistor and the Thevenin resistor are equal to each other. And so if RL equals RTH, what that means is, is that the load voltage must be one half of the Thevenin voltage. And that's from voltage division. If these two resistors are the same value, then this voltage gets divided equally. So V sub L is one half V Thevenin. So I know that V sub L is one half V Thevenin. And of course, if we square that, and then it has to be divided by R sub L. And then when you rearrange this, you'll find VTH squared over 4 R sub L, 4 R sub L, which is the exact same result we found in the previous slide when we did it via the current method. And for this example, the maximum power that we can get out of this circuit into R sub L is going to be VTH, 8 volts quantity squared, over four times. In this case, it's going to be 10 kilo ohms. And when you do that analysis, you will get 1.6 milliwatts. Volts and K ohms will give you milliwatts. So to summarize, maximum power transfer. If you are looking for a value, if you have a circuit of interest, and 
you would like to know what can I, what kind of value of, what value of resistance can I attach to this circuit to absorb the maximum possible power, right? So the circuit itself can't be changed. I can just change a single resistor somewhere. How do I choose that single resistor to get the maximum possible power given the circuit that's been given to me? Well, that is you need to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit. Whenever anyone, anyone says maximum power transfer, you must immediately think of Thevenin circuit. So any circuit that you need to analyze can be, can be represented as a Thevenin circuit. And also, we didn't mention it so far, but it can also be mentioned by a Norton circuit. All right, those Norton and Thevenin said those circuits do exist, and they tell you how to find them. All right, and so you find the Thevenin or the Norton equivalent circuit for the circuit of interest, and then you can get your maximum possible power when you set your load resistor equal to the Thevenin resistance, but it also equals the Norton resistance. Because remember, the Thevenin and the Norton resistances are always equal to each other, if you go back to the Thevenin and Norton videos. So whenever anyone says maximum possible power transfer, you immediately must think Thevenin and Norton because to get the maximum possible power, you need to set your load resistor equal to the Thevenin resistance, which is also the Norton resistance. This is, shows the true power of the Thevenin and Norton's theorem, the fact that any circuit can be represented by something that is simpler now gives us the opportunity to do a simple analysis that can now be applied to any circuit because any circuit can be written in these two forms and now we have a result which can tell us the answer for any possible circuit. And maximum power transfer is something we do all the time. In general in electrical and computer engineering we do a, to generate a circuit to compute an answer a voltage or a current that means something and we want to give that answer to someone else. Well how do you give it to someone else unambiguously so there's no confusion? You transfer it to them with maximum possible power. So the maximum possible power circuit is something we design all the time in electrical and computer engineering. We'll go back and review Thevenin circuits and the Norton circuits and then this again because this is a, va this is a, a theorem and idea that is incredibly powerful and gets used all the time. Thanks for listening. See you next time.